this wonderful Shakespearean troupe of South Florida, who has been working with our middle school eighth grade students over the course of this week. The first day, all of the students were introduced to all of these different elements of Shakespeare and performance. And then they had three days, three days, in which to learn their lines and to apply what they learned to what you are going to see today. So think about that, three days. What makes this very special is that this is a time where our teens can immerse themselves in the, in the works of Shakespeare and have it become enlivened through their mind's eye, but also through the senses and, and experience this in the truest sense of the word. So they have an appreciation for Shakespeare and, and develop, hopefully, a love for Shakespeare. With the Artists in Residence program, our goal is to bring visual and performing artists onto the campus to work with our students. I, I want you to come with, with your, your fears, with, with, with your awkwardness. It's okay to not know how to do things. I can give you the tools, but what I want for you to, is to discover it yourself. Is at the end of this week, you're going to make the audience feel some, a strong way. And, and so you, you have this beautiful group of actors who are going to teach you how to do that. Yeah. And this is such a treasure. This is so amazing. So think about that. All the things, all the tricks and and tips he gave you is so that you know how to make people feel the words and create a vision in their mind. It's been wonderful so far. The uh, students are very excited. They're getting to meet and learn from people who are actually doing this kind of work. The production is called The World of Shakespeare because I'm giving them not just some of the text from First Folio, but we're giving them the way people danced. And we're giving them some of the inside tips too on, on stage uh, movement and how to behave on stage and, and how to uh, give the appearance of a fight or a mime of how to hold an apple. And so those are bits of craft that uh, they're very excited about too. I want you, in other words, to characterize, in other words, add something to your storytelling that gives me a strong sense of who that, what that show is. Do you understand what I mean? Does that make sense? I can do that. I, what I did was I gave like Java Hut kind of a stance and a funniness or ears or something. My name is Harrison. I like watching Naruto. I like watching Naruto because he, in the face of discrimination, becomes one of the best what he does. He becomes the best ninja, and I'll do one of his ninja things. Water gun. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. You want that? I think you have a yes. Okay. Shakespeare says, ah. suit the action to the word. So he. He did it in parts. He said, I'm going to do this, and then he did it. You can also do it at the same time. In other words, uh, I like this ninja guy, and I'm doing it as I'm describing it to you. Suit the action to the word is the, is the stage direction that Shakespeare often gives us. You've got to just try something on and see if it feels right. What is it about this character that I like so much? What is it about him that I identify with? He calls his daughter a fool. He's not in control. He's the man in control, but at that point in, in the scene, he is not in control. At the Cushman School, so I'm directing the scenes from Twelfth Night, 
um, with uh, with my group. Uh, they're working on Twelfth Night, and then on Monday when we all taught the workshops, the workshop I taught was in stage combat, so I taught them that. And then, uh, even though I'm directing the scenes from Twelfth Night, I'll also be directing the combat and the other scenes as well. Casino is a vehicle through whom Shakespeare explores the absurdity of love. A supreme egotist, Orsino mopes around complaining how heartsick he is, he is over Olivia when it is clear that he is chiefly in love with the idea of being in love and enjoys making a spectacle of himself. Questions on that? No. Okay. Olivia, a wealthy, beautiful, and noble Illyrian lady. Olivia is courted by Orsino and Sir Andrew Agichi, but to each of them she insists that she is in mourning for her recently deceased brother and will not marry for seven years. Olivia and Orsino are similar characters in that each seems to enjoy wallowing in his or her own misery. So she looks like you, basically. And then Olivia falls in love with Cesario when they're meeting up. But then you show up, and Olivia sees you and thinks it's Cesario, so she wants to marry you, and you're like, what? I don't even know you. Yeah, okay, okay. I guess I'm looking forward to seeing what the, uh, the, the kids bring to it, you know? Um, this is, for many of them, it's their first experience with Shakespeare, and uh, for their first experience, they're picking it up pretty quickly. These are, these are smart kids, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what, become, what becomes of it. The play that I'm working on is Midsummer Night's Dream, obviously not the whole play, selected scenes. Um, and we've got to come in in a time frame because there are four of us and we've got, got to be packed into one afternoon. So Midsummer Night's Dream, which I have a particular penchant for, as it has so much movement and magic and my specialty is movement. Helena, Helena, tell Helena of the plan who tells Demetrius. Why? Because Demetrius and Helena were once in love, until Hermia came along, and we fell for her instead. Loved Helena. <laughs> loved him back. Loved him back. Now Demetrius loves Hermia. To her. And look at him. He doesn't love her back. And Helena still loves Demetrius. <laughs> and you had to have a gesture that you just love him back. You know, get out of here. Yeah. And Helena still loves Demetrius. <laughs> Who doesn't love her back? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and so that's, that's your part finished, okay? It's very exciting. Um, I've worked with children quite a bit before. Um, sometimes in a school setting, sometimes I've worked in after school programs with dance and, and theater and um, you know, community theater, drama camps and so forth. So I'm not new to working with, with youngsters and you know children of various ages. And uh, so it's an exciting prospect because you're passing on what you know. And it's, it's you're learning together. You're, you're you know, growing as, a, as an artist and as a person. I'll give you a verse to this note that I made up yesterday in the spite of my invention. Just make sure not, don't close yourselves off. Working with the kids and just seeing, just seeing them latch on to the language and just get into the action and uh, try to understand the characters and their intent. So it's uh, just seeing them exposed to something new, I think that's, that's a good thing. Shakespeare doesn't, it, there's no guessing game for him. When he, lady disdain, that means he wants you to enunciate that, right? When it, like if you look through your script and your parts and you see something capitalized, kind of like a little pause, like, like what my dear lady disdain, are you yet living, you know? So I want you to like pause and just like, da da da, you know. So when you see that, I want to hear like, you know, raise your pitch a little bit or do whatever. Play. I'm not telling you exactly what to do, but that's like your, that's your license as an actor to kind of go with it, play with it, right? So try that again. I wonder that you will still be talking, Senor Benedict. No body marks you. What, my dear lady, this thing. Are you yet living? No, I want to hear Lady Disdain. Lady Disdain. Yeah, there you go. You hear the difference? Yeah. 
You have, right. you have license you, to be sarcastic. Yes, you're, you're being sarcastic. And you're like the one time. Benedict. The Benedict. first, the once in a lifetime that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you know? So try it again. I want you to say that line here. What, my dear lady, disdain, are you yet living? Yes. <laughs> yes. And what does he mean by are you like, yet living? Does he mean like are you, are you even alive? Are you even yeah. alive? Yeah. 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 Do you, uh, yeah. So like, do you even matter? matter? Do you, yeah. yeah kind of like that. Yeah. So we may guess by this, like Leonardo knows your reputation by women, what you are. I don't have a pencil. Yeah. So Pedro. So when he says we may guess, it's all right. It's it. We may guess by this what you are, like. You know his reputation with women, right? You know Benedict's reputation with women. So that's what that means. We may guess by this what you are being a man. Truly the lady's father herself. The lady looks like her dad. That's what that means. So that's what that means. Truly the lady's father, the lady's father looks like herself. Like the, she looks like her dad. Right. So, be happy, lady, for you are like an honorable father. You're like an, you're like an honorable man. So basically, Thursday so basically, it's complimenting the daughter because the father is honorable, and then you must be honorable too because you're his progeny, you're his daughter. So if the dad is a good guy, yeah. you're a good person too. And she looks like him. Yeah, and you look like him so. better, so that's more, more the merrier, more, more the reason why you're a good person. You're a good person because you look just like daddy. And I remember during the first day there were certain workshops um, on different techniques. Um, what was your specialty that day? Elizabethan dance. And uh, it's, it was an in integral part of the court back then. And Queen Elizabeth loved dance. She thought it was a helpful uh, way to stimulate the mind and the body. And they believed in exercise. And we brought different principles uh, to them and made them aware of how they moved in the court you know, at the time. difficult part um, in, in, working, in working with this project, I, um, whether it's the time frame or just it, difficulties. You hit the nail on the head, it's a time frame, but you know, just you have to be malleable. You have to, you know, you have to go with, uh, go with the flow and that's part of theater, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to deal with what's presented to you and make the best of it and I think you're going to do a great job on Friday. I did not then entreat to have her stay. It was your pleasure and your own remorse. I was too young at that time to value her, but now I know her. And I have been all this day to avoid him. He is too disputable for my company. I think of as many matters as he, but I give heaven thanks and make no boast of that. Come, horrible, come. <laughs> I'll give you a verse to this note that I made yesterday in despite of my invention. And I'll sing it. Let me explain. Lysander loves Hermia, 
who loves him back. Once, once Demetrius loved Helena, who loved him back. Now Demetrius loves Hermia, who doesn't love him back, and Helena still loves Demetrius, who doesn't love her back. So, Helena is envious of Hermia. Dresses. Some are born great. Huh? Some, some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? Some have greatness thrust upon. Heaven restore thee. And some. Remember. Uh, remember. Remember. Remember who commanded the yellow stockings. The yellow stockings? And to see them cross garter. Cross garter? <laughs> stage right. If you are left of Viola and you are not on stage, you will be entering stage left. Everybody join hands. We're going to take it off Viola and up and down and up and down. Two bows. going to do is give you an idea of how the show is going to go now. The scene order, the acts that is, the, the, the plays themselves. First up will be Midsummer Night's Dream. Warm the audience up. And then the second show, Twelfth Night. Third show, Much Ado About Nothing. Fourth and final show, As You Like It. We've got to do all of this in the space of an hour and 30 minutes tops. This is your day to make it your show. that says, Whee! yes, yes, I can do that. Yes, yes. Do it. Yes, I can yes. do that. Yes. 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 When we walk out the door, we walk out in character, onto the stage. You know your parts, you know your duties. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. So under the direction of Peter, where was he, Galman? 
He's back here. You will be your player. Yes. You will be able to enjoy this wonderful show today. Let's give them all a hand as we start. magically turns the head of Bottom, one of Shakespeare's most famous clowns, into the head of an ass. Thou dost speak masterly, my life upon it. Young thou art, thine eye, haste set upon some favor that it loves. Take me. It's not. A little, by your favor. My shroud of water stuck all with you. wants nothing to do with the Duke, or any man for that matter. But that all changes when she meets the Duke's young page. Stay, I pray thee, tell me what thou thinks of me. That you do think you are, not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right, I am not what I am. I would you were, as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, that I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Where is Malvolio? He is sad and civil, and suits well for a servant with my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? He is coming, madam, but I beg you to my hand. He is shipped with us, madam. Why, what's the matter? Does he rave? No, madam, he does nothing but smile. How now, Malvolio? <laughs> oh. Sweet lady. <laughs> Smilest thou? I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad, lady, I could be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood, the cross guarded. But it is with me as the very true son it is. Please one and please all. Remember who commanded the yellow stockings. Thy yellow stockings? And wish to see them cross guarded. Cross guarded? Go to thou art a maid to be deserved, son. Am I maid? If not, let me see the servant still. Why, this is very midsummer madness. What relish is in this? How runs the stream? Or am I mad? Or this is a dream? Let Francis still my sense and Leffy steep. If thus to be a dream, still let me sleep. But that's all one. Our play is done. And we'll strive to please you every day. Much ado about nothing is actually much ado about love. I think this is your daughter. I wonder that you will still be talking, Senor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What, my dear lady, disdain? Are you yet living? Is it possible disdain should die while she has such me to feel defeated as Senor Benedict? 
Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Then it is courtesy a turncoat, but it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you accepted. And I would, I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women. They would also have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. And I thank God in my cold blood. I am of your humor for that. <laughs> and say nothing. I'm yours for the walk, and especially when I walk away. With me? In your company? I may say so when I please. And when please, you just say so? When I swore you were well nigh dead for me. Tis no matter that you do not love me. No, truly, but in friendly recompense. Come, cousin, I'm sure you love the gentleman. And I'll be sworn upon that he loves her, for here's a paper written in his hand, a halting sentence of his own pure being, fashion for Beatrice. And here's another writ in her cousin's hand, stolen from her pocket, containing her affection unto Benedict. A miracle! Here's our own hands against our own hearts. Come, I will have thee, but by this light I take thee for pity. I would not deny you, but by this good day I yield upon great persuasion, and partly to save your life, for I was told you were in a consumption. <laughs> We give you, as you like it, a pastoral comedy. Love is where you find it. If it's not in the court, it will be in the country. That's more, on such a sudden, you should fall into so strong liking with old Sir Roland's youngest son. The Duke, my father, loved his father dearly. Doth it therefore ensue that you should love his son dearly? By this kind of chase I should hate him, for my father hated his father dearly. Yet I hate not Orlando. No faith, hate him not for my sake. Why should I not? Doth he not deserve well? Let me love him for that, and do you love him, because I do. Look, here comes the Duke. Me, uncle? You, cousin, within these ten days, if thou beest found so near our public court as twenty miles, thou dies for it. Come hither, come hither, and shall he see no enemy but winter and rough weather. More, more, I pray thee more. It will make you melancholy, my dear Jack. I thank it more, I pray thee more. Come hither, come hither, come hither, and shall he see no enemy but winter and rough weather. I'll give you a verse to say. Forbear and eat no more? Why, I have eaten none yet. Nor shall not, till necessity be served. Of what kind should this cock come of? Art thou thus boldened, man by the distress, or say rude despiser of good manners, that in civility thou seemest so empty? You touch my vein at first, the thorny points, of bare distress, have tamed from me from the shell, a smooth civility, yet am I in them bred, and no so nurture, but forbear, I say.